Diamond Vision, that's our, our uh, theme here for, for this little series. Uh, and the idea is that the gospel, the good news of Jesus is like a many faceted diamond. And we're looking at one of those facets every Sunday during this time. A short, we're showing a short film to kind of focus on that facet. And, and it's not just for us, uh, uh, the, but it's also uh, for those around us. And so the idea is that we receive uh, this, this glorious diamond, a particular facet of it today, and we look to give it away. Uh, that's, that's our focus in these few weeks. Today, the uh, flow is the name of the short film. Uh, and what I want you to do is you see this film. It's another one of those films that has no speaking lines, all right? So you gotta open your eyes and, and, and see how they're communicating without words, okay? But as I, I want you to do two things as you look at this film. I want you you to check and see how your stomach feels, the feelings that you have inside, okay? And, and, I, want you, and I want you to think in your mind what you almost uh, would want to scream at these people, okay? Uh, that that uh, you, know, you, just, you just, you almost can keep yourself from screaming right at the film, all right? Here we go. So after the first service, uh, a guy caught me in the hallway and he said, uh, Pastor, I like the service. He says, but I couldn't even watch the video. <laughs> so it was so great, I had to shut my eyes. <laughs> so um, how did it make you feel? Did you have like that reaction inside? Went boom, right? What, what are they doing? I mean, it made you feel gross, right? And did you want to scream at them, don't drink the water? 
right? You don't want to say, come on, man, that's gross. Why would you ever do that, right? And then, and then they're looking at the water, first the one guy and the two of them, and they're trying to figure out you know, the water that's flowing the whole time. Did you catch that? So the water that's clean and healthy and pure is always there for them. It's always flowing, and yet they're always going back and drinking the dirty stuff, huh? Didn't you want to just say, what are you guys doing? In fact, I don't know about you, but as they were making the film, I kind of st stepped out of the film. I found myself doing this. Step out of the film, I thought, man, I hope they really made sure that's clean water there. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? I mean, because they're, they're actually drinking. And I, I really start, oh, God, I hope they really took care of this, because they could get sick, right? I mean, or they could even get that E. coli stuff and die, right? I'm, I mean, I'm going to think all through all that stuff. I'm so grossed out. You know, and, and, then, <laughs> and then you think that his friend... He's going, to, he's going to get him straightened out, right? But he's majoring in minors. He just wants a clean glass of the dirty water. You know, I, mine, when, I, um, when I was in Denver, uh, the, right uh, in front of the church that we served at, the, a water main broke, and they, it took about four days to fix it. And I called them up, because when you turned on the, the faucet, it was, it was dirty. It was brown water, right? And they said, oh, you can drink it. It's no problem. <laughs> I'll never forget. I say, and I remember saying, well, you know what? I don't think I'm going to drink it until it's better. Oh, no, no. We fixed the pipe. I said, well, that's okay, but I'll wait until it's clean water, right? You made your minor sometimes, right? You think, well, if the vessel is good and clean, the water might, well, no, it's dirty. I I ain't drinking that water, right? So I got a question for you. Where are you drinking the water out of the toilet in your life? And, and a follow-up here, and where do you have a hard time seeing it or, or admitting it? And where is the clean water just flowing and flowing and flowing? Because it's always there, just flowing. But where are you just going back to the dirty stuff all the time? And do this in a lot of ways. Uh, you know how your mind kind of flits all around when you're seeing a film, or when I, I remember reading that, that that word visceral came into my mind, and it means that feeling inside that makes your stomach kind of jump. And and, and the first time I saw that word, I, I was reading about how the um, Jewish, the first Jewish Christians, you know, the first church was was mostly Jewish, it started in Jerusalem, and there was this great barrier with the Gentiles to that even even to conceive that they could uh, be part of God's people. Uh, even though they knew Jesus, even though the Jewish uh, Christians knew, knew Jesus. And, and the huge chasm there was that it, it sickened them to their stomachs when they saw how the Gentile world lived in sexual immorality. Very similar to our world, by the way. And, and it so grossed them out, right? And because and, and, they saw all around this dirty water that, that, and, and they saw what it was doing to the people. Right, you had you, you you had broken relationships. You had all kinds of diseases. You had broken families. You had broken marriages. Um, you had broken children. Right, and 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 even then, right, you had children that that, that were not allowed to even be born, huh? And so this so grossed them out when they saw how the, the Gentiles lived that, that it, that's the first time I saw the word visceral in print. That they had this visceral reaction, right? They they they, they wanted to puke, right? And so it was real hard for them to, to even conceive uh, of these folks coming to know Jesus and turning away from the dirty water that they, that they were part of. Yeah, and, and in our time, there's so many ways that, 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 that we can take a little sip of that dirty water, right? What we watch on TV or, or, or what, what we hear on the or what we think is okay, huh? Um, but that, that's, just, that's just one little example. Uh, there, there's so many, what, what do you, we look to fill our lives with? Because we all struggle with that emptiness stuff because by nature, uh, certainly we were created for a relationship with God, but what sin has done is, is it separated us from God, right? And, and so we, we, we kind of always struggle with that emptiness and wanting to be filled up. Where do you look to dirty water to fill you up? Maybe even just a little section of your mind. You know, we tend to like to compartmentalize. So over here, I'll play with the dirty water. Huh? Just, just in this area, I'll take in the dirty water. But what happens, that dirty water makes us sick, systemically, right? Can even kill us. Where do you know another that you love that's, that's happening to? You know, we, we, we live in a time when... Um, we, we, we talk about addictions all, all over the place. Talk about alcohol addiction. Uh, uh, we, we, we have a new one, o opio opioid addiction, right? Uh, we, we, we talk about a, a workaholic. We talk about a sexaholic. We talk, what's happening with all those things? 
People are looking to fill themselves up, to fill up the emptiness in the wrong places. All those things are counterfeit. It, it can't fill us up, it can't make us whole. And in fact, they're making us sick. We're drinking the dirty water. And sometimes we have a hard time seeing it, and sometimes we certainly don't want to admit it. That little compartment in our mind, right? I'm not going to admit that to anybody. God knows, right? And more than that, what that does to our soul, it dirties our whole soul up. It's not good for us. It makes us sick. Jesus said, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, and slander. You see this, the dirtiness of a heart. Out of the heart comes these things. And I love that word slander. We, we, we don't, we, we look at all the others and say, oh, these, these are big things. And they are, but, but, but slander, slander is the way we talk about each other, the way we see each other in every relationship. Uh, um, I, I know you guys are different, but have you ever had trouble in your marriage about how you see your husband or wife? Or maybe even how you're tempted to talk about them. Maybe if you're just talking to yourself, right? Even then, you, 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 blah, 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 blah. even the closest of relationships, husbands, wives, children, mom and dad, right? We struggle with how we think about each other and how we talk about each other. And it, it breaks our relationships. It dirties our hearts so that what comes out in actions is hurtful. And we pay the price every day. Jesus has a better way, go ahead. He says this, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And what I love about this, um, you know, most of the time Jesus spent preaching out in the countryside and, and talking with his disciples one-on-one, -on -one, kind, of, um, kind of a staid type, type of thing, you know, not very excited, he was just talking to people. But, but here, this is in the middle of the feast. The, it says the last and greatest day of the feast. And you had these huge crowds in Jerusalem, right? And he's standing up in the temple. And I'm telling you here, he's not whispering this. He's like a street preacher here, okay? He's standing up and he's saying, and he wants everyone to hear. And he says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He wants you to know, see? He wanted every single person in the crowd to know. By the way, are you part of that anyone? You see, he used that word so that no one was left out. You or anyone else, even that person you've written off. Because no darkness is too great for the light of Jesus Christ, right? So he says, if anyone is thirsty, it's for everybody. Let him come to me and drink. I am the water of life. I'm the one who gives you life the way it was meant to be. Life connected with God again in this relationship of love. And through him, life connected in love and relationship with those around us and with the whole world. We, we fill our souls with so many dark things. Even when we think we're in the right, you know, uh, anger and jealousy and hatred and judgment uh, of, of those others that are different from us, huh? Or others who, that are wrong and, and we're right. Jesus calls us to a different place, a place that doesn't darken our soul, a place that empowers us to live in this thing called love. This agape love that, that loves even when people don't deserve it because that's how Jesus loves us. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And then Isaiah it says this, it says, come to me all you who are thirsty, come to the waters and you who have, read the underlying part, ready? You who have no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. We call this thing grace, undeserved love. You see, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are thirsty, and he doesn't say, clean up your dark soul first. He doesn't say, go make that stuff right that you screwed up back there. Go make it right what happened 10 years ago or yesterday. Fix your soul, and then you can have some good water. That's not what he says. He doesn't say that you gotta jump through hoops. 
because he is the water that makes our souls clean and he gives it to us without money and without cost. It's a free gift. The Spirit of God is right now touching your heart with this reality. Wherever there's darkness in your soul, maybe, maybe you are completely cut off from God. Maybe because of that stuff back there, you, you can't think that until you get that figured out, God can ever accept you, huh? No, it's grace. It's, it's that Jesus did it all. Or that, that shadow in your mind or soul that, that grabs you and doesn't want to let go, that secret that you would share with no one, God wants to give you freedom there. He wants you to know the life of Jesus in that place. And it's a gift. A gift that he gives to you. Trust him, re receive it from him, see? And in that receiving, you drink this water that is the water of life. Not, not simply biological life, but this life that we were created for, life tied to God in relationship every day and finally forever. Why spend money on that which is not bread and your labor on that which is not satisfied? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. You remember uh, the movie The Help? Uh, you know, it's about the, the maids in, in uh, deep, deep South, and they were writing a book about that. And remember that line, uh, the, the one maid said to the, the gal that was caught in such hatred in her life, she said, ain't you tired? Ain't you tired? I think that's what the prophet is saying to us. Aren't you tired of, of looking to all the wrong places to fill your soul? Aren't you tired of drinking the dirty water? Aren't you tired of pouring your sweat and your work into things that cannot fill you up, but rather will just make you more sick? Aren't you tired? Listen to me, drink the fine water, the clean water of Jesus Christ and live, see? That's what he's saying. Where are you tired? Where are you tired of trying to fill your soul or, or that little portion in that room in your soul with stuff that's dirty? Let it go and listen. Listen to the voice of the Savior. If anyone is thirsty, come to me. That's what Jesus says to us. With joy, finally, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Let this be known to all the world. And so it's just not for me. It's for that person over there that's drunk so much dirty water in their life that I can hardly look at them. But Jesus is for them as well. That one who hurts you, that one who disappointed you, that one who did that horrible thing, that one who is so different. Let this be known to all the world. Where is the Spirit of God touching your heart right now and saying yes, it's for this one as well as for you? It all flows here, <laughs> into the cross of Christ. That's what we're talking about, right? You see, all the dirtiness, all of, our, all of those things that, that, that dirty our soul and, 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 and make us sick and actually kill us, it was all nailed to Jesus Christ. Everything that dirties our soul and every way that is lived out in these horrible things that we do, it was all nailed to Jesus Christ, so much so that God was so grossed out, he turned his back on him. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In our place, God turned his back on him. so that we might know that God will never turn his back on us. And the proclamation of the resurrection, it simply says that the purity of Christ is one. He's defeated all the darkness and all the sickness, all the dirtiness. And every single day, 
He gives us a brand new beginning to live in that resurrection. Forgiven and loved, a brand new start to live in the pure water of life. The angel showed me the river, the water of life. This is from the book of Revelation, last book in the Bible. The apostle is, is, is seeing this vision of eternity, right? The, the angel showed me the river, the water of life, as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the, read the last word, and of the lamb. Why would he say that? Why would the, this, these words be given to the apostle? What, what, what does it matter about the lamb in eternity? The, reason, the reality that Jesus is the lamb the one that was slain from the foundation of the world, the one who every lamb that was sacrificed, thousands and thousands in the Old Testament pointed to, the one whom John the Baptist says, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the lamb. He laid down his life on the cross, which makes him the water of life that he gives to each of us, the resurrection and victory. And this, this is a life that will last etern into eternity. The angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb into all eternity. So, <laughs> where are you drinking the water out of the toilet? And where do you have a hard time seeing it or admitting it? And how's that working for you? And where is there another who is drinking that water maybe doesn't even recognize the pure water? Someone that you, that you can bring the pure water to. If anyone is thirsty, Jesus said, let him come to me and drink. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Let this be known to all the world. So this week, watch the film again with your family, your friends, and talk about it. You can even use the questions we have given you both in the worship trifles and the Lenten devotions. Go ahead. Then e uh, email or text the link of the film to your friends and extended family, maybe even posting it on your Facebook page, just to share, or better yet, as discussion starters. You can say something like, hey, we're showing these neat films for a number of Sundays that really get me thinking. I thought you might like to see this one. And if they want to talk, you can use the questions. You know, a good place to start is to be transparent and talk about those places you have, uh, you have or you are drinking the dirty water and what it means that God's grace comes to you there. Just a thought. Because by grace through faith, we can daily turn away from drinking toilet water and drink instead of the water of life because others are drinking toilet water and have need of the pure water of Jesus www.stmatthewrockland.com slash videos. It's in, your Lenten, it's in your trifles as well and in the Lenten devotions. And may God bless you this week. Amen.